Hello my friends, as you can see behind me, I'm editing the video you are about to see. Now there's some things that I wanted to add to the video that I didn't quite capture when filming. And so I'm going to jump in and interrupt the video periodically to tell you a little bit more information. This video was really exciting for me, and so I was a little bit too excited to tell the storyline properly. Oh, I have an exciting video for you guys today. Well, it's an exciting video for me. I never thought that I was gonna be able to make this kind of video without spending a lot of money to do so, but it turns out that I am able to make this video because of somebody who watches my videos. So the person who watches my videos is one stall over and what they have, they have a Arctic Fox 990 just like mine but it's a 2019 and they're hauling it with a one ton quad cab dually diesel. I get to see the difference between a gas truck and a diesel truck and a quad cab versus a standard cab. So the wheelbase will be longer. And so I'm really uh, interested to see how the mobility is with the truck camper on. I love this truck, okay? I do, I love this setup. But what I'm about to show you is like the ultimate setup. And I'm so excited to park them side by side and to show you the differences. guys so this is it right here and I've got the owner which is uh, which is Randy meet everybody on YouTube hey youtubers he actually watches my videos and so he texts me and said hey I'm uh, at the campsite right next to you and uh, so we geeked out over truck campers okay? yeah we did we yeah. had a bit of a talk and we were like oh what does yours have that mine doesn't but I'll let I'll let Randy explain what his setup is here. Is this a 2018 truck? That's right. It's a 2018 diesel LTZ package. Yeah. And the camper is a 2019. It's from the future, actually. Woo! Arctic Fox. And uh, yeah. And you can tell right away from the logo change. You know, mine's a, a gray or black, and yours is like a uh, burgundy brown. A burgundy brown. Like brown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just real quick, guys, how neat does this look? Two Arctic Foxes parked side by side, right? And the only difference that we can find is that um, you have an awning on the left, the, the driver's side, which I do not have. See the awning up there. But basically everything else is exactly the same. And the decals. The yeah, awning and the decals. Pretty much. And the weight, is the weight exactly the same? Camper weight in pounds, I'm 3526. 3526, exactly the same. the same weight, yep. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hop in. Randy says that I can drive, which is exciting. So we're gonna go for a little drive. I'm just gonna drive around the camp uh, ground and just kinda see what the difference is. And then Randy's gonna take over and we're gonna go up the Malahat, which is a very steep mountain here on Vancouver Island. And I just wanna see the, the capability of, uh, of the diesel versus the gas. So let's do it. And Randy's gonna be the cameraman. He's letting me, what a great guy you are. He's letting me drive this rig. Oh, it even smells like leather. Brand spanking new, hey? Okay. So there's a, it's like a Jake brake, engine exhaust brake. So if you're going down hills, it's like a big truck. Yeah. Right, 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 okay. Now the first thing I notice is that when I look up top, you can't see the overhead of the camper. So with mine, it overhangs a whole lot. Basically, uh, right here is the front of his. One thing I'm really interested to see is just that wheelbase to see how much teeter. Like when we go over these speed bumps up here, I'm interested to see how much you feel it. Because when you drive mine, Randy's gonna go and drive mine after we're done here, but you'll feel it, it rock like teeter-totter a bit. What a nice truck. I tell you, I will trade straight across. You don't even owe me anything. No cash. Yeah, I'll have to think about that one. <laughs> so I didn't do the best of explaining this in the video, but basically the three things I, were, I was curious about, number one, 
What was the power like in the diesel? Number two, did you get that teeter rocking motion because of the longer wheelbase? And number three, how did it handle side by side? Was there a sway? Was there, uh, did it feel quite tippy? So those were the three main things that I wanted to figure out uh, when driving this truck and when going for a ride with them. This is a great example. I, my truck would have shifted and I'd probably be around 3000 RPM right now. Uh, the engine working really hard to get up this hill, but right now it, it's, it's nothing. It's absolutely nothing. It just, I just feel like I'm coasting up the hill. That is the biggest difference I have noticed with the diesel versus the gas right now. All right, so we're just gonna grab a coffee at uh, Timmy's to make this video Canadian, and then we're gonna take this truck. He's gonna drive, and we're gonna go up the Malahat, which is uh, a big mountain just over there, and see how it performs. Also, it has a Jake brake or an engine brake, and so we're gonna test that out, and I'll get to film it. So the truck is uh, just basically stock. You don't have any airbags on it. No sway bars, just a stock truck, just like mine, on the leaf springs. And already I'm noticing, I don't know how well my mic can do it justice, but how quiet it is. It's not a very choppy diesel it's not loud in the cab it's very comfortable in here noticing it still does have that teeter uh, and you can tell that the camper is heavy with the truck but it's not as bad I would say it's about 50% as bad as uh, as the ride quality of my uh, single cab and also I can already see exactly like I suspected but there's just more power there's more torque behind a diesel and so you, that engine isn't running as hard so you're just kind of gliding up this hill whereas I would be you know pedal to the metal I'm at four even five thousand rpm uh, just to keep up with the speed of 80 kilometers an hour now I tried to match up the sounds with what his truck sounded like going up the same hill as my truck sounded but I don't have the best audio for that so it pretty much sounds the exact same, but I can tell you that when we were in his truck, it was working way less and it was so quiet because, and I think a big reason for that, because the very front of his campers push back a little ways, whereas mine's ahead of me. So I feel like I get a little bit more wind noise, but his was much quieter than mine. Um, and then mine's very loud uh, because of the wind noise and because it's working a whole lot harder. You can hear the engine. And this may not be the most accurate way to get the, the mileage, but as of right now, my truck and camper are getting around seven to eight miles per gallon, whereas we looked at his, on his dash, his average miles per gallon, and he's at about uh, uh, 10.6, so 10 and a half. So there is a bit of a difference between the, uh, the fuel mileage. I know this isn't the best way to, to take that into account, but I just wanted to give you guys a, a general uh, sense of the uh, miles per gallon. Okay guys, now we're taking my truck and you're gonna see how loud it is, how much more fuel I burn, and how bumpy the ride is. But once again, I mean, his truck is much more expensive than mine. He says he paid about $85,000 for that truck. It's got all the bells and whistles, whereas I paid 42,000. Now I did have a trade, so that bumped it up to 51, but the truck itself was actually worth 42 grand. Are you excited? Oh, you want me to drive? Oh yeah. Yeah, I'm excited. All right, all right let's, let's do it. <laughs> Now you're gonna notice right away that there's not as much room in here because there's no back seat. Yeah, a little less storage room for sure. Just a little bit. So across Canada, right? Yeah. Okay, let's, let's go. go. And you can see it, hey? See how much it moves? I get a lot of questions here, guys, of, of does this obstruct, the front of my camper obstruct, lights like waiting at lights and whatnot uh, and no it doesn't it's far enough back where i can see everything sometimes i do have to get up and, and kind of lean and look over but it doesn't obstruct anything although you can it is visible can you i can even feel it right now of, of just that bumpiness the ride is not as smooth as yours yeah right something that little like a grittier feel right? to it yeah yeah for sure definitely working a lot harder yeah so we're going up the same uh, spot where he was at about 2,000 RPM. My truck's at about 4,000 RPM working. Wonder how many times we can tell them there's a power difference between, before we start to get comments saying, yeah, we get it, there's a power difference. But it just need, it just need to be in our perspective to be able to try the gas and the diesel. I don't know how many people are in that position. And around the same year, I mean, mine's a 2017, yours is a 2018, and the same weight to the camper. So how often do you have that? to be able to, to side by side compare. It really is neat. I'm, I'm glad that we uh, we uh, got to do this. Brake right now? Can you touch the brake? 
want to see my RPMs went up? Yeah. So they're just like a bit of a, see? Little compression, yeah. Yeah, whatever that's called. So the diesel truck has the, the diesel exhaust brake, but my gas truck also has some type of engine brake, and it does really work. When you're going down a hill, you touch the brake once, the RPMs jack up, and then you touch them again, you touch the brake again, and they go up even further. And so that change of RPM is really slowing the truck down. But with the exhaust brake, I noticed the steeper the hill, uh, the, the more it slows you down. Just like a big truck, just like a bus, uh, the bigger the hill, the more that engine brake is working. So a little bit different braking systems, but kind of neat that both trucks do have some type of braking system. I really do like the, the diesel exhaust brake though. Okay, so I'm gonna do a little recap. Uh, Randy's gotta get going, I've gotta get going, so we just made this work, and uh, I'm gonna do a little recap for you guys, but also I want to let you plug your Airbnbs. Oh yeah. Randy's offered me a stay at some of his Airbnbs, and he's got some really neat locations. So you've got one in Comox. That's right, it's Cedar House. Cedar House. Yeah. You've got one in? Kelowna. Kelowna. If you're tired of the camper shower, the short shower, yeah, yeah, yeah. stay at one of our Airbnbs, I'll give you a discount. Uh, mention Taylor. Done. And yeah, enjoy. Done. Check them out in the link in the description below. All right, well, thank you so much for everything. Yeah, you're welcome. And uh, I'm going to go say bye to Randy, and then I will uh, give you guys a full review of my thoughts of the diesel. I've told him a million times he's sick and tired of me here uh, saying it, but I am jealous of his setup. More so jealous of his truck because we have basically the same camper, but that truck, yeah, phenomenal. Yeah. We're not trading trucks today. <laughs> I asked him, I said, can we just trade? Straight across the board? No. <laughs> Turn it. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, he said no, which makes sense. All right, guys, before I end the video, I just want to give you kind of a, a, a review of the gas truck versus the diesel truck. Well, obviously, in the power section, the diesel wins. I was very impressed to see how the diesel handled that weight. It was just, it was like nothing. It was like nothing. It would go up those hills almost just like it was a gliding effort, effortlessly up the hill. Whereas I am working four or 5,000 RPM and you can sure hear it in the truck. Now I was also curious about the wheelbase. A lot of people said, hey, that teeter, that rocking that you feel, you'll get rid of it completely if you get a quad cap. Uh, but not completely. Like I said in the video, about 50% of the quad cap is a nicer ride. It's a smoother ride, but you don't completely get rid of it. So it made me feel a little bit better. Uh, but the thing is that the front of my camper is basically over the front of my wheels, whereas the weight is just distributed a little bit more even throughout that wheelbase. Uh, or on the back end of the wheelbase of the uh, quad cap. So that was very interesting for me to learn. Uh, there's no real way for me to show it to you through the camera, but just trust me, uh, the quad cab is about 50% better than the single cab. Side to side when taking corners, we both agreed that it was the same. Takes corners, uh, it's a little bit heavy. You can feel it's top heavy, but uh, about the same, both trucks. Miles per gallon, uh, I know in the video, I, I didn't do it in the best way, but he had had his truck camper on his truck for a while. I had had my truck camper on my truck for a while. We both been driving highway, we both been driving city, and so we basically both took the average kilometers off that, and uh, he was about 10.5 miles a gallon, and I was about eight. Um, depending on where I'm going with the truck, of course, that varies, same with him, but it kind of does give you a bit of an estimate of the, uh, of the miles per gallon. So kind of interesting to see it firsthand. Now the one thing I do have over any diesel and any quad cab is my payload capacity. In the league of this type of truck, a one ton dually, I would have the largest payload capacity out of any one ton, essentially any one ton, give or take the brands. But um, so I do have a larger payload capacity uh, than him. I think that his is around 5,000 and mine's closer to, uh, to 7,000 or 6,500. And then with the shorter wheelbase uh, in parking lots, I mean, I can park pretty much in any parking spot, whereas Randy's kind of got to find a parking spot at the edge of the parking lot or take up a few parking spots because he's much longer than me. He's about, I think about three or four feet, however long that door is, which I think it's about three, maybe even over three feet longer. And then probably the biggest difference is the price. Like I said in the video, uh, Randy paid $85,000 for his diesel truck, whereas I paid $42,000. So I basically paid about half the amount that he paid. And it's kind of funny if you park the truck side by side, I literally have half the truck that he does. But that is where the biggest difference in my opinion comes is the, the price. I was looking at diesels, they're way more expensive. Now, if you were 
were to get a base model diesel the same size as my truck, so a single cab, bare basics diesel, it's about fifteen dollars to $20,000 more. But he went, he got a quad cab and he got all the bells and whistles. So that's why it is double the price. So if the question were, what type of truck, diesel or gas, hauls a truck camper better, it would be 100% a diesel. More power and a smoother ride. But if you don't have 85,000 bucks, <laughs> your second best bet if you do need a dually one ton is to drop down and, and do a gas. So my friends, that is the comparison between the diesel and the gas. In my next video, we're gonna be heading to Kelowna. Well, I'm already here, but you guys haven't seen the journey yet. Uh, and so that is the next video. And I hope that you guys have a wonderful rest of your night. Keep living that dream as always. Subscribe if you want to. Until next time, my friends, take care and bye-bye.